So what is epiphany? Epiphany is a word that means manifestation. And there were many signs of God's glory that manifest themselves uh, for Christ's birth. And even following Christ's birth. See, the wise men didn't come the evening of Christ's birth. They may have came a few days, a few weeks. Uh, whatever it may have been, they came a little bit later. And they followed a star, which was a manifestation of God's light and God's glory. They found a baby who was God in the flesh, made manifest for us and for our salvation. And... They themselves, who were Gentiles from a land far off, came to worship the God of Israel to make and fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 60. So we'll take a look at this gospel story from Matthew. Uh, and for many of you, you've already been following along in the gospel of Matthew uh, as we've been reading it together in our Matthew 28 for 28 challenge. Uh, there are some bookmarks still loved at the Welcome Center, but basically uh, the idea is to read a chapter of the Gospel of Matthew each day. So let's read chapter 2 together. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will, shepherd the, who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May the Lord bless our hearts and minds this reading of his gospel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our rock and redeemer, our light and our salvation, we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the wisdom that comes on high, that guides our lives, that guides us to Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we give you thanks for your holy word, O oh Lord, that continues to shine in our lives daily. And as I expound upon this word, I pray that you would speak to me, through me, in me, and in spite of me. All for your great glory. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Now when I was growing up, uh, there was a series of books that were called Find Your Own Mystery. Something to that effect. Uh, and if you actually read straight through in one of these books, uh, you would be really confused because usually it would be like you read about Batman and it would say if you want Batman to chase after the penguin turn to page 12 uh, then if you, but if you want Batman to run away from the penguin turn to page 42 uh, it was like choose your own adventure 
Uh, now they don't really have these kinds of series of books. Maybe some of you remember them from your childhood. But what kids have these days are video games, where they can choose their own adventure. And one of the most popular forms of video games are called role-playing games. And they're very similar to choose your own adventure kind of books. Uh, you make it to a certain place, and you're given a choice. Uh, choose to talk to the wizard, or choose to talk to the witch. So, something to that effect. Uh, and either one of them gives you a gift or a clue to get to the next place that you're wanting to go. Uh, and it kind of strikes me that the story of the Magi is kind of like a choose your own adventure series. Uh, they had a series of steps uh, and decisions that they had to make. Uh, so they choose to follow the star to Jerusalem, and or did they choose to follow it somewhere else? Well, they chose to follow it to Jerusalem. And they, who, did they talk to King Herod or did they talk to Pilate? Who, who did they go talk to? Or a governor of the area, Roman governor of the area? Well, they go talk to King Herod. And King Herod gives them more clues and more information. And they go on this quest. But in the end of it, they had a very uh, interesting decision to make. They found this child who uh, they had foreseen because they were astrologers. They had read the sky. Uh, they weren't reading scripture. They didn't have the Jewish scriptures in front of them, most likely. Uh, they just searched the stars, understood something, and God had shown this to them uh, through the wonder of his creation. And they, do they return to Herod and report back to him, or they go home to their, their country? Well, they chose to go home to their country by another route. Uh, they realized, like many of us do, uh, that sometimes we have a decision to make. Do we follow the way of the world? Do we listen to the Herods of this world? Or do we listen to the signs that God has given us? and make the difficult choice to follow God, no matter the cost. Now, um, as I look at this, the series of choices that we have to make on our own journey uh, are kind of stations on our destination. Uh, the first place that we will find ourselves if we follow this journey of the wise men is coming to Bethlehem. And why is Bethlehem? Well, Bethlehem was the birthplace of King David, uh, one of Israel's greatest kings, uh, who started out as a lowly shepherd boy. And God would bring another shepherd from Bethlehem to guide his people. And this is, of course, Jesus Christ. Bethlehem also happens to mean a uh, place of bread or house of bread. But it, in a way, it comes to fulfill its name in being a, the incarnation. Uh, the bread of heaven has come down to be with us in Jesus Christ. Uh, this is the place where heaven and earth meet. A place where our expectations about God are changed forever. Some of us would like God to stay far away. High in the heaven, overlooking us, and meanwhile, we're Lowly mortals are just struggling here, but God comes and struggles with us. He lives among us and understands us, has compassion on us, and is brought down to our level. Uh, so for some, this is a scary thought. What do you mean? God is near us? Sometimes it's easier to think of God as being far away. The next station that we find ourselves as we come to this place where heaven and earth meet in Bethlehem is that we find God as a child. We find God vulnerable just like we are. And in being reminded of our own weakness and vulnerability, um, we are confronted with the fact that this world is a fragile now, mind you, God invested all power and authority in this child. So at the same time as Jesus is a fully human being, fully vulnerable, 
He is also fully God. And we see the signs of God's glory when the star is above this place where the wise men are guided. This is an event that doesn't just have a local significance for Bethlehem, but it has a global significance and a universal significance that ripples even to this day for us. <clears throat> and lastly, we come to find the star. Do we just follow the star just to come to Jesus Christ and that be it? Or could it be that uh, God's light desires to guide us even beyond our journey of finding Christ? Now that we have found Christ and we come into the presence and worship Him and offer our best gifts, should we, like the wise men, go a different road? I believe this to be so. I believe that the star is not just for a once-in-a-lifetime event, but it is a sign that we should continue to follow God's light each and every day. Uh, the light could be appeared to us through the light of Scripture, of engaging in daily Bible study and prayer each day. Uh, it could be us sharing that light with others through our acts of service and charity and love. Whatever it may be, it doesn't just have to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. But we can continue to renew and seek that star and follow that star. For the star doesn't just have to be in the sky, but it can shine brightly <laughs> in us and through us. It is the light of Christ. Jesus promised that he was the light of the world. And as the light of the world, he continues to guide us uh, in faith. And as we come today on this epiphany and share the ways that God is made manifest in our lives, we also come to the table and are reminded of the significance of the choices that Jesus made. He himself, like the wise men, had a difficult choice to make. Would he accept the cup of his suffering, or would he not? I'm thankful that Jesus made that choice for us. That God made the decision that we were so worth his love, that he came to earth to redeem us and save us. This meal, of which we are about to partake, is a reminder to us of God's love. It is a reminder to us of God's light, and it is a, as we are nourished at this table, so we are to go into the world wiser, more ready to share the light of Christ with others. So we come to this place, this table, Christ invites all those, all who love him, all who would seek to follow his light, would seek to grow into his likeness, are welcome at this table. You do not need to be a member of, of this church, but you simply need to become, come seeking Christ, like the wise man. In order to prepare ourselves to come to this table, we confess the ways that we have fallen short. And in that way, we offer our heart to God. Just as the wise men offered their best treasures. It wasn't just about the physical gifts that they were offering Christ, but that they came to worship and offered their very best. So let us pray together. Yeah, bow your hands. <coughs> Almighty God, O oh Lord, in this world, we have difficult choices to make. And we confess, O oh Lord, that we haven't always made the right choices. Sometimes it's easier to follow a Herod than to follow a baby in, a, a baby in the arms of a mother. But yet, O oh Lord, we ask that your light would shine upon us and guide us. That you would shed your light, O oh Lord, upon our sins and the ways that we have fallen short. We confess that we have not been obedient, church. We have failed to do your will. And we have broken your law. 
and we have failed to hear the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray, O Lord, and shine your perpetual light into our lives, that we may freely worship <coughs> and freely serve you with the joy that comes with being in the light as you are in the light. And by this way we have fellowship with one another. Now we can open our eyes and turn to the light and hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. It proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. 